Hello and welcome to another Scarred Cast Battle Report. Today we're playing Astra Militarum versus Chaos Space Marines. So stay tuned as this battle report ensues over this blasted ruinscape. Let's begin. So today, these two 1,500-point armies will clash in a Maelstrom of War mission. We're about to go into deployment, and we'll explain the armies when it gets to that point. The Imperial Guard will have to stem the forces of chaos. Stay tuned. The forces of the Astra Militarum are being assaulted at night by the Alpha Legion Chaos Space Marines. They have set up a defensive perimeter near the no man's land that used to be the central bastion of this imperial city. The Alpha Legion, using their covert tactics, have moved up closer and closer to the imperial lines at night, and we find them as the battle commences in the spoils of war. So the Maelstrom mission has objective number one by the statue, Objective number three by the crashed a killer. Objective number six by the ruined Reiner. Objective number five by the Bastion. Objective number two in the Basilica. And objective number four by the Manifactorum. The forces will now clash in a battle of epic proportions. The Imperial Guard deployed first at 1500 points. We have one platoon split into two blobs of 20 men, each with a priest. This one has two auto cannons, and this one has two last cannons. We have a plasma cutioner tank with regular loadout, as well as veterans with last cannon melter guns. A company commander whose warlord trait is bellowing voice, so he can issue orders within 18 inches. Platoon command with flamers in another chimera holding up the flank together with a Banewolf, uh, with a Melter Cannon, and the dreaded Manticore. In reserve, there is a Vendetta with a special weapon team with Flamers. On the Chaos Space Marine side, we have three Chaos Bikers with two Flamers, two Melters, sorry, and a Combi Melter. Three Nurgle Obliterators, veterans of the Long Wall, not veterans of the Long Wall, with a Nurgle Sorcerer. Five Chaos Space Marines in a Rhino with a Dozer Blade. A Daka thing. Forge. Forge Fiend. Two more five man Rhino units with Melter Guns. One of them has the Super Launcher. Three more bikes with lots of Melters as well. Another Forge Fiend and another unit with melter guns in the back so they are a hundred percent deployed the imperial guard do indeed want to take the first turn but do the chaos space marines wish to seize the initiative they do oh. and the game begins as the imperial guard guns start a blazing astra militarum turn one so moving up to put some pressure on the center of the table. The real key here was I needed to try and do as much damage as possible to the main firepower base of the Chaos Space Marines in the form of the Forge Fiends and the Obliterators. High Command of the Imperial Guard asked them to create psychological warfare and to kill the enemy warlord. They also secured Objective 1 this turn. Shooting was relatively ineffective, but they did succeed in shaking this rhino here and successfully shaking this forge fiend here so it cannot move and it can only snap shoot. A lot of shooting from the manticore and lots of different things killed one obliterator, they did not fall back, and the melter cannon forced these bikers into jinking. In other horrible news, the plasma cutioner gave itself two hull points after trying to fire as its plasma cannons vented crazily. So we're moving on to Chaos Space Marine. Turn one. 
and the Space Marines will find out what their missions are. The Chaos Space Marine forces advanced in full force. The Chaos High Command ordered them to issue psychological warfare, to behind enemy lines, and to ascendancy, to be ascendant, which they did gain. They did get first blood by killing a chimera, forcing the veteran unit to emergency disembark. The rest of the shooting was ineffectual, killing a few guardsmen from the front blob near objective one, and ascendancy only gained D uh, one point for first blood. So chaos are at two points, Imperial Guard are, are at one point. Will the vendetta arrive from reserve? It doesn't, and it stays off. So the second turn began with me moving up to put a lot more pressure on the far left flank in the cathedral. During the middle, the veterans now exposed, uh, trying to make themselves useful with their anti-tank weaponry, and on the far flank, trying to stop the units that are advancing forward. The veterans moved up, the last cannons taking off the last hull point from the Rhino, achieving the big game hunter command that High Command had given them. This platoon has moved up to put pressure onto the Skyfire Nexus in the cathedral, while at the same time taking a hull point off the Rhino. The Plasmacution attack killed itself while putting one wound on the Obliterators. And the Devil Dog came up and killed one of the bikes who passed their morale save. In other shooting, the Manticore did not do anything with the Forge Fiend way in the back there, passing its cover save from being in a ruin. So we're moving on to the Chaos Space Marine, turn two. Let's see what will happen. Trying to gain some points and put pressure on the Imperial Guard force, the Chaos Space Marines move forward and gain many objectives this turn, and in turn put a lot of pressure in the face of the Imperial Guard army. The Chaos Space Marines have put some pressure on the Imperial Guard forces, with the Alpha Legion moving in near Objective 2, killing a few of the guardsmen in the ruins. The veterans taking some casualties from being on the front line but passing their morale test. The company commander's chimera is now snap shooting. The flamers inside suffered the shake and damage and it is now immobilized whereas the bikers moved up to try and take out the chimera and failed. The melter guns from the obliterators failed to do any damage to the devil dog while the chaos space marines have indeed taken objective three for another point, bringing their point total up to three. The Imperial Guard will now see if the Vendetta arrives. It does, with a four. My mission this turn was simple, to try and eliminate at least one of the Forge Fiends to make sure that my surviving vehicles had a chance and to knock out the maneuverability of the Chaos Space Marines by eliminating as many of their Rhinos as possible to prevent them from gaining objective points. With pressure on all fronts, the Imperial Guard had to be on their best. Uh, nothing happened to that unit over there. Nothing happened back here as the Manticore missed all the clumped up units horribly once again. The veterans were issued tank hunters and they killed the Rhino and then other shooting killed a couple of marines. They fell back, giving me psychological warfare. The bikers got first rank, second ranked, and last gunner raid to death, while the vendetta moved in and successfully put one glancing hit on the mauler fiend. In other news, this rhino is at one hull point left and it can only snap shoot, but the folks inside are fine. The Chaos Space Marines really continue to pull me out of position using combats and good maneuverability to put pressure at key points at the tabletop. Trying to eliminate a few units, although we shall see how effective they are. 
The Chaos Space Marines, putting pressure on the Imperial Guard lines. These Chaos Space Marines charged in, killing three Guardsmen in the Blob. The Blob is now being pulled into the combat. There's still five Space Marines left. This Rhino has gained behind enemy lines, moving back into the backfield. The veterans have survived by um, death or glorying. Death or glorying. Over. Overwatching one of the bikers with a melter gun, which forced them to fail their charge. The Chaos Space Marine to back continue to run while the two Forge Fiends continue to advance. This Forge Fiend did not. It will not die this turn. In other shooting, the two melter guns in that rhino blew the Devil Dog up, and one Forge Fiend forced my Vendetta to continue to move 18 inches forward and not be able to do anything else this turn. Oh, well, other than Snapshoot. And now we're moving on to Imperial Guard turn 4. Right now we're sitting at 4 points for the Imperial Guard to 5 points for the Chaos Space Marines. With the Chaos Space Marines at their doorstep, the Astra Militarum had to focus fire and really start thinking about the end game, being turn 4. It could only be going a few more turns, so a little bit of luck on their side was needed in order to turn the tide steadily in their favour. Okay. The Imperial Guard High Command ordered Imperial Guardsmen, Astra Militarum, to secure Objective 6 which the company command squad has done, and to destroy enemy units with shooting. The biker was destroyed, achieving overwhelming firepower. In combat, the prayers went off, re-rolling saves, and nobody was hurt in this combat. Shooting was ineffectual across the board, with all the last cannons doing no damage, and the manticores, last shot, all the armor saves were passed on the obliterators. The Morphine passed its vulnerable save once again. So we're moving on to Chaos Space Marines, turn four. Having survived most of the potential damage from the Astra Militarum forces, the Chaos Space Marines rally and regroup and prepare to deal a hammer blow to the forces of the Emperor. The Chaos Space Marines in the combat did absolutely nothing, killing one Marine. There is now a challenge ongoing between this, one of the sergeants and the champion. Nothing happened there. Bolter from this Rhino tried to kill the Melter Gunner in range because I can steal Secure Objective 6 and I will next turn because he failed to do any damage. This Rhino moved up to secure Objective 5, and he still hasn't been able to kill anything in combat to get blood and guts, while this Forge Fiend failed his fleet charge against the veterans in cover. In other news, this Forge Fiend blew the Vendetta out of the sky. It crashed and burned right here, and everyone inside died a horrible, flamey death. Moving on to Imperial Guard turn Five could be the end of the game. Turn five. In a final desperate push, the Astra Militarum attempt to put as much pressure on the surviving Chaos forces as possible to hope for a late end game where the War of Attrition will go in their favour. The company commander move up to secure Objective 6, taking it away from the Chaos missing the Rhino with the melt gun and the auto cannon. These two last cannons also missed the Rhino doing nothing. The two melt guns and the last cannon, well two melt guns missed the Morphine with the veterans. The last cannon put one penetrating hit, succeeding in blowing off one of the guns. The order to move, move, move failed on the flamers, so they ran one inch. The Manticore moved up and boosted to try get into the enemy deployment zone later in the game. So moving on to Chaos turn six, 5 could be the end of the game and the slap fest continued with the Space Marines passing their saves and one Imperial Guardsman dying in the combat. Sensing victory, the Chaos Space Marines advance at full force and at the end 
of this turn should be getting two or three points to really bring their advantage to bear. That should conclude my movement. High command asking them to secure objective four. They were able to take objective four and my objective four for two points. They also took my objective five for another point. The Morlafine finally murdered all the veterans in close combat and his objective one will be mine if it goes on to turn six. The Manticore trying to do a flanking maneuver got killed by last cannons, whereas the guardsmen are just staying. And the one melter gun, death all gloried and immobilized the rhino heroically before uh, getting crushed beneath foot. While this sergeant, the chaos sergeant, won the challenge and everything else was pretty much a slap fest. So, does it continue to turn six? Oh, no. It doesn't. That is game. We'll be back with a tally. And the score is seven points to the Astra Militarum to ten points to the Alpha Legion Chaos Space Marines, giving a victory to the forces of chaos. It is a sad day for the Imperium of Mankind when the forces of heresy succeed against the Emperor's finest. Well, not finest, just guardsmen, really. Okay, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Comments about the game, Sam? Finally! <laughs> I know it's not your Dark Elder, but um, it, very different army to play against. Uh, I don't have the pleasure or privilege of playing against AM very often. So it was a completely different mindset knowing that you don't have paper armor and I have to pump a lot more shots into you. I really like the blobs, they weren't going anywhere and I think at some point I decided that I wasn't going to focus too much on them and get rid of the things that are really going to hurt me. Um, you had some pretty unlucky dice rolling and this, this combat over here that lasted for three turns of slapping has been an interesting one. I love maelstroms. And um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, this mission's a fun one because the objectives, um, you know, you can steal from your opponent. So we'll talk about that more in the tactical corner. As always, this is Scurry. I'm on a quest for 8,000 subscribers this year. Make sure you click that little link right here if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. Check out more videos, um, more battle reports, tacticas, that whatnot. Um, all the links are down in the description below. I'm on a kind of quest to play a couple of games with Astra Militarum to kind of show off the army and try out some tactical stuff. This is my 1500 point list. Second game with it and I have a couple of changes I'm going to be doing but I'll talk about that later. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy the battle report. Sad day for the Empire once again. Cheers. This is Gary App. Hello and welcome to another Tactical Corner. So the Astra Militarum army uh, in the picture has a basilisk, it really was the manticore, I switched that out after. Playing the gorgeous army of Matt for his Chaos Space Marines that he took to the Barry Bash 1500 point ITC tournament event where he did quite well and won best sportsman at. The mission, Maelstrom, where each of us could score the opposing player's secure objective X. So I set up all across the board using vast numbers to put as much pressure across the table as possible, hoping that he would pick a side and then I was able to wrap around. Now this wasn't the case. Matt was playing a multiple small unit army. So he was able to put pressure all along the table and use cover to his advantage to mitigate my firing lanes, using the obliterators to anchor the central firing position with a good commanding view of the battlefield itself. Now in my movement phases and shooting phases early in game, losing the execution of plasma tank dealt a heavy blow to the firepower of the Imperial Guard and that basically committed suicide on itself. But with the potential damage that tank can do, it's definitely worth the point investment and the potential risk. 
In the Maelstrom of War mission, I knew I had to make sure I had a lot of bodies around the objectives to mitigate him capturing my objectives, and that forced my hand early in the game. Not getting out of the Slapfest combat really proved to be a detriment to the list itself, and uh, next game I'm thinking of putting power weapons or power axes on the sergeants for them to be able to do some damage in combat while being buried inside the larger squads. All in all, a tough match and a loss for the Astra Militarum, but we'll be ever waiting for another time to prove the worth of the Emperor's forces.